Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Airbrushing Bruce Lee Enter the Dragon. We're working on something a little bit different today. We're working on the bigger standalone easel. I don't usually get this easel out, but we're working on that one today because I'm set up with the weekend for a one-to-one -one class. So we're going to work in sort of that side of the studio. Now this piece of artwork will probably take me five, six hours to paint it. So I'm not going to do a straight video five, six hours long. It'd be absolutely ridiculous. It's longer than watching a film. So I'm going to break it down into time-lapse sections. So we're going to do a time-lapse section. Then I'll do a, a minute talk through on what I've done and then jump straight back into a time-lapse section. So we can really compress it down, but you get to see the whole piece of artwork in one video. And I think that works out pretty cool. And then we have a little chat at the end. So there's loads of bits we're using today. Let's take a look at the bits we're using and then we'll jump straight into it. See you in a bit. Right guys, we are doing the first pause. I'm gonna talk you through where we are, how I got to it. Now, we started working this in sepia really light, going in really light, sort of mapping it out, and then you've just seen it sort of build up and build up. Now, I'm just overlaying the sepia that I've got. I've got a sort of light mix, and then I've got a little slightly darker mix, and now I'm gonna go in with a darker mix. Now, 
to get this darker mix of CPR, with these little bottles, you can do minimal drops of paint. So I'll probably do like six drops of CPR to like three drops of black, darken it off. And now we can start doing the darker tones in the eyes, darker bits under the nose, the crease in the mouth, the bit underneath the jaw, and just start to darken it out and do darks in the hair. Now we've got the tone in the hair. We can just start to darken it back and put a few more textures in the hair coming around. And then we can start working down this piece of the body next, the torso, the hand. Now I'm not worried about any other piece on the piece of artwork. I've got the main piece in here. So the rest of it, I can just sit and relax and just chip away at it now. You basically just zooming in on a piece and just paint it. We've got the main piece that your focal point is looking at is basically Bruce Lee's face at the, at the front and then the rest we can just work in and I can just chill out now and enjoy it and just start darkening the tones back. Now, running pressure, because this paint, this paper is very smooth, guys. It's very smooth and you can sort of knock it back with an eraser. So where there's highlights in the nose and little pieces in the creases here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a small eraser a bit later on and just start popping the highlights, just bringing the highlights out slightly with an eraser and just knocking it back so you get the nice soft tones of the, of the highlights coming through. And we'll just crack on. So just chipping away nice and slow, take your time, check your paint to the side because when you're painting on smoother paper, if you're running high pressure and real thin paint, you can really, you can blow it out so easily. So just dial it in, test it as you're working. If you want to test it, go to a dark on your area and just test your brush in a dark area. If it starts to blow out in a dark area, don't worry because you can go over and you can cover it up. You can cover a lot of mistakes up if it just starts to blow out in a darker area than if you're doing it in a lighter area. So we'll jump straight into the next time lapse and we'll start working down. See you in a bit. another little pause just chipping away and using an eraser this time I'm using a Tombow eraser because you can erase back on this paper it's really nice to wear with so you can just drop your pass the paint down and then you can just start putting the textures in and giving it like the skin textures and just doing the little cutting in and building it up drop a bit of paint down knock a bit back do some little textures in it and we're just building up the muscle tones in the bottom part of the body. Got the hand in, first pass. We're gonna go a little bit darker on this and just knock bits back. You can just go in like that and just do some textures in the bottoms of the hand, coming round. And you can just sort of like add a bit, take a bit away, add a bit, take a bit away. It's really nice to work with on this paper. And just put them little subtle highlights in. I did the same with the face, just bring the face out a little bit more here. Just soften the highlights up and just put the textures in and work around with this. These are really nice because they're like a retractable point on these, quite a hard tip on these as well. And it just takes the ink away really nice. So just work it in like that. And just bring your highlights out where you need them. That's all you gotta do. like that, a little bit down here, and just keep chipping away. Still using the first sepia mix, which is the, which is the light one. 
So I'm going to work the rest of this piece here. Get all this finished, put the dark, got a little bit darker to go in here. Darker just to line this out slightly to bring that forward. A little bit darker under this shadow here. A few more textures along here. A few more darks in the hand and we'll call that one done for that. Then we can start working the bottom of the sort of his gi trousers and his belt in. We can drop that in with the darks and we'll do the same again. We're going to work this in the dark sepia and then we'll just erase and just start to erase and bring them highlights out and put the creases in on this and on the belt. Then that'll be done and then we can just start blasting out the uh, dragon. We'll do the same sort of thing with the dragon as well. We're going to work that in a Payne's Grey and then start with tone it down and we'll do the erasing in this as well just to bring them light soft sort of highlights out coming around on the dragon same thing so we will crack on to kneel on the floor on this because the seat only goes so far and it's really low to get this bit. so I was kneeling on the floor to get this little piece bit in here went in with the sepia dropped the tones in did a little bit of erasing just to bring the highlights out here then went in with the black mixed in with the sepia we're going to do a little bit more on this just going to pull some more of the highlights out just by hitting it with the eraser and just bringing in just fading some of these in, these little creases in round here. Just softly just take them across. Give it that nice soft tone going around. We'll do a few more bits on there. And then we can start working the dragon in. Now, I haven't gone right up to the edges of the fingers because we've got the dragon behind. So that will, once these darks go in behind here, this will pop Bruce forward more because you've got a dark around the back which will sharpen him up around the edges as we work the dragon in. It'll just bring that forward and the dragon will just set it back. So I'm going to get some Payne's Grey. I'm going to go with Payne's Grey, a slightly darker Payne's Grey. And we're just going to do the dragon in that. And where there's little bits of, there is little tints of colour in the dragon. <clears throat> I think round here there's a little bit of red somewhere in this piece round here. I'll just get a bit of red and just dust over and just tint over the top where it needs to go around here. But we're just going to work this in one colour. We'll be working with the paints grey and I'll just be erasing getting some little textures in around where the scale bits are and sort of around here as we work it up. So we will crack on. a little pause and a talk through on what I'm doing. Now I've mixed the Payne's Grey, I put Payne's Grey in about five, six drops and dropped sepia in it as well to give it a sort of warmer sort of tone. So it's like a greeny type brown, like a greeny tone it's dropped in it, which is really nice for the dragon. 
and I'm just basically sketching in, doing like little tiny little details and little textures, and then going in with the eraser and just doing little random squiggles and dropping some little highlights in like that, just to give it some textures. So this is the first pass on the dragon. We're gonna go a little bit darker. I'm gonna do that same mix and then drop a drop of black in it to go in all the creases and darken out the creases a bit later. I'm gonna work it in that tone, coming round, work it round the top. And basically just going in sort of freehand sketching with the infinity goes right down on details. You can get your real fine lines ridiculously easy guys you really can and then just use the shields to sharpen bits up i've got little bits here where it's blown out but these bits i can get the electric eraser and just nib any bits that have like gone over i can just nib out with the electric eraser and take it back to the white board on the outer but once the dragon's in we will do a pass like a shaded pass around it just a little sort of halo around the dragon we're going to drop some bright colour in the eyes to make the eyes pop on the dragon like a bright orange colour with a bit of red with the black centering on the dragon eye just to make that pop forward and just keep continuing on so you just sort of chip it away do a little bit of time we did that section there i've done that section this piece here dropped into this section here started here i'm going to start working up because i've got to kneel down for this bit because it's really low and this part of the dragon here has got that bit and that bit to do. But I'll just continue up here and start working this piece in. So I'll see you in the next step. There you go guys a little bit of a long time that's in the last one but we got it down in the end i've just dropped a little bit of like dusted round it give it like a little bit of a smoke effect around there we've got the dragon in we worked the dragon with um Payne's gray and mixed in a little bit of sepia i did the eye with like wicked red and a bit of sort of orange 
and then done a little black sort of dash in the center of it, a little white highlight, and then just sort of work the scales all sort of freehand and then put some little textures in. We used an electric eraser um, just to knock out some real bright highlights. And we use the Tombow eraser as well, which is the retractable one. They're really good, they are. Paper's brilliant, works really nice on this. As I say, when you get smoother papers, like when you're working on sort of aluminium panels and things like that, you've really got to um, dial your air pressure in when you've got thin paint. And just take your time, go to the test panel. You can see I've been going to the test panel here. I'll just pan around at that, you can see the test panel. But this one's been a split from this morning, did a bit and sort of edited a bit and then I've just done a bit tonight to finish it off for you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed it, picked a little bit up along the way. As I say, just take your time, build your layers up and do a little piece at a time. Don't get overwhelmed by the whole picture, just sort of break it down. We started off with his head there, we worked that bit in first, then came down the body, worked this piece. Then we work the bottom piece. I started here, dropped sort of like the, the claw of the dragon in. Then we went up to this piece, work round, work the head in, come back down this way, and then just dusted over the edges. Job done, and then just cleaned up any edge, any over pencil lines, just rub them out. The ink settles down, and then you can just rub the uh, pencil lines out. We could go on for another hour, two hours on this, just keep tweaking it, adding more details. It's just sort of never ending, but I'm gonna leave it at that. It looks looks pretty cool. This one will look nice framed. I'm gonna matte uh, varnish this one. Just gonna seal it in a matte varnish, and then that'll be good for framing. So, hope you've enjoyed it. Drop your comments, tell me your thoughts. We've used the new Infinity 2024, guys. Highly recommend it. If you're doing real sort of tight integral detail stuff or Detail up to like that sort of standard, that big, because that is a quite big piece. Brilliant brush to get on with. You're just doodling with it. Literally, it makes your life easier using this brush, just painting with it, because it's just like sketching with a pencil. I always say sketching with a pencil with this thing. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant brush. I'll leave a link in the description to this if you wanted to pick one up. You can get the solo and you can get the two in one. I'd recommend getting the two in one because then you get two needle and nozzle setups. You get the 025. So if you want to get real tight down on your thin paint tight details, you can. It does cope with thicker paints as well with the 025, running 20 psi, absolute dream. But you get the 44 in that set as well. I'd like to see what the uh, the 44 needles like because I've used the Evo on the 45 and the 28. And I think the 4.5 on the Evo works really nice for thicker paints, but still gets down on tight detail when you, uh, when you use it. So thanks a lot. Cheers, guys.